Before we get started into this episode of Vintage Audio Review, I just wanted to thank everybody who tuned in for the live stream a few weeks ago. I thought it was a very big success as far as the number of folks that uh, joined in and commented and for the most part asked questions that I could comment on or try to answer and, and for me it was real fun. I will do it again when I hit 4,000 subscribers. I don't know exactly when that is but I think at the rate the channel grows it's a hundred and some maybe 140 subscribers a month so uh, maybe five months from now I'll have another live stream to celebrate that and hopefully we'll get more people going in. It went for a bit over an hour and probably could have gone longer. People like to talk about audio and I certainly do and it's too bad that you know we can't do like a zoom call with everybody but at least with the YouTube you can type in the questions and I thought that worked rather well. So once again thank you. There were two winners. Hopefully they have gotten the ET30s from Neo Hippo by the time this video airs and if not let me know. In episode number 126 where I did an A-B test between two amplifiers one of the comments left was in regards to a speaker that was seen in the background and if I could do a review on it. Well, that speaker happened to be a JBL 250Ti, of which I have a pair here, thanks to my good buddy Richard, who lugged these 150 pound beasts over to my place so that I could test them. It would have been easier to test them in his home, but in order to be able to compare these with some other speakers that I've measured in uh, the room that we're in, which is where I measure them, uh, it, had to be done here so I do appreciate Richard getting them over to me so in 1985 if you had thirty four hundred dollars you could have bought a pair of these and according to the inflation calculator that would be about ninety nine hundred dollars today they were recommended to be used with an amplifier of not more than 400 watts and listed a sensitivity of 90 DB at one watt and one meter they are a four-way speaker. They have a four-inch port. You can see it in the back. The woofer is 14-inch. The lower mid-range driver, as it's called, is 8-inch. Then it has a 5-inch mid-range and a 1-inch tweeter. Now, there's a, a crossover. You can see here that you can select different attenuation levels for um, the particular drivers, and we'll go over that in just a minute. But I'll give just a, a little kind of a quick tour of them and then uh, I'll present the data and tell you about my listening experience. Here's what the JBL 250Ti loudspeaker looks like. This would be the left loudspeaker. If you were facing them, this would be the guy on the left. The right speaker would be a mirror image of this guy. I would like to point out that if you were to uh, draw a vertical line from the center of the tweeter straight down, none of the other drivers would be on that vertical line other than the tweeter and then we have mounting places here for speaker grills which the owner did not have this is the rear of the jbl 250ti loudspeaker our three-way binding posts are here to connect to your amplifier it does have a port on the back and you can see part of uh, i believe there's a woofer uh right here now the jumpers will allow you to select different amounts of attenuation for the mid frequency, high frequency, and ultra high frequency. I did some tests with these at other settings and you will see that coming up in the data. Oh boy, in case you were wondering what the crossover looks like, well here it is. If you pull out the woofer in the front, this guy is what you can see. And it's a pretty big crossover as you can tell, they put a lot of work into it. In case you were wondering about the 250Ti's impedance, here it is for both speakers. What's nice is that they pretty much overlap each other. It's listed as an 8 ohm nominal speaker. We're hitting around 5 ohms here at 10 kilohertz, but for the most part, it kind of hovers around 8 ohms and does not exceed 16 ohms. In case you were wondering what the phase looks like versus the impedance, and I'm just showing the right speaker, the left speaker looked about the same the phase portion of the impedance is here in red and the real portion of the impedance which you just saw earlier is this light blue line and it kind of just shows you how much the phase varies over frequency 
Here is the REW SPL plot from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz of the JBL 250Ti loudspeakers. Our left loudspeaker is here and the right loudspeaker is there. You can see they look pretty much the same other than at the high end of the band around 10 kilohertz. The right channel has uh, a bit more uh, amplitude except for this little suck out right here at the very, very high end of the band. But for the most part, they track each other fairly well. Some of these suck outs are more related to my room response than they are the speaker response. The specification on the 250Ti is that it has a 90 dB SPL. If I average all the SPLs up across the uh, entire band, and I just did it for the left loudspeaker, I come up with an SPL of about 84 dB. So it's not quite there, but I'm not using the same room that they did, nor the same equipment, but that's just what it adds up when I look at these responses. And some of these suckouts here, I'm sure, are contributing to that lower number. The 90 dB SPL level would be a line going across here. So we're kind of far from that for the most part. And maybe they just pick at a certain frequency, maybe at one kilohertz. But uh, anyway, that's what I measured when I averaged them all up. On the back of the JBL 250Ti, as you saw that you can adjust the frequency response a bit. I'm going to get rid of the left speaker because I only did this for the right speaker. And if I uh, click this guy in, this is where I used the jumper for minus 3 dB on the mid frequency adjustment. So not really a lot of change when I did that between... Uh, having that minus 3 dB jumper in there at all. Let me get rid of that. Here is the minus 2.5 dB ultra high frequency jumper shunted across. And indeed, let me highlight that a little bit. You can see that that one does drop down the response at the very high end of the band, definitely. So right here, I have the high frequency 2.5 dB jumper selected. And you can see that it's in this range right here. Let me highlight it. And in this case, you can see that it looks like it did indeed drop that mid-frequency area down by, uh, I guess it could be 2.5 dB. And that just shows the effect of using those multiple jumpers. I only did it for the one speaker just to get an idea of how things changed. I guess the mid-frequency one didn't really change much, but let me bring that back up. That's this guy right here, and it's supposed to attenuate it. It didn't really look like it attenuated very much. I may have made the mid-frequencies a little bit pronounced. Right now, I've got both the left and right JBL 250Ti speakers in, and I'm going to show you a plot for the Wilson Watt 3 Puppy 2 loudspeaker, and that's this guy right here. And you can see that it's more efficient as far as the SPLs. It, it also has a suck out. Let me uh, just highlight the Wilson there a little bit. So you can see that its SPL is definitely greater uh, than the 250 Ti. And the Wilson Watt 3 Puppy 2 is definitely a lot smaller speaker, but it is more efficient than the 250 Ti. And it looks like it has a bit better frequency response maybe at the high end of the band. And uh, overall, it just kind of shows a comparison. And these are both done in the same uh, room in the same space. So it kind of shows that the suck out, uh, it shows that suck out here and, you know, somewhat over here as well. So that's kind of just a comparison of the REW data. While we were unloading the speakers, my buddy Richard mentioned to me, oh, by the way, if you get some voice coil rubbing sound in one of the woofers, just rotate it uh, 180 degrees. I'm thinking, oh, that's good to know. So more on that later. So once I got the speakers in and in position and I lined up my microphone so that it was one meter away and it was pointed right about here. So I use a laser uh, leveling system and it was pointed right about there. And I adjusted the power level going uh, into the speaker during the test to be one watt or 2.83 volts RMF. They are mirror image speakers. And when I uh, did 
the other speaker I tried to line it up in the exact spot but it was off probably a little bit I'm sure and if you look at the data both speakers line up pretty good as far as frequency response except one speaker had a little bit uh, better uh, high-end response than the other one some of that could just be the way the speaker was tilted and um, you know I would put it down for maybe measurement error or there could be you know some differences in these speakers that are as old as they are but I thought they were pretty darn close for the most part. Their impedances both measured pretty close, looked pretty good for being as old as they are. So during the testing of the right speaker using the REW software, I noticed that the low frequency um, portion of the test, something didn't sound quite right. There was some distortion and you know, I just figured, oh, that's probably that uh, voice coil rubbing that he's talking about in the woofer. Even though that one speaker, the right speaker, had that, they both tracked pretty good on the low frequency portion. At that point, I decided to run just a very specific low frequency test from, I think, 20 hertz to maybe 500 hertz. And I plotted the THD for each of the speakers, and you can see that the right speaker had a greater distortion. I think it was twice as much as the left speaker in the low frequency range, which I'm going to attribute to that voice coil uh, rubbing. I ran a sweep from 20 hertz to 150 hertz, and what we're seeing here are the distortions of each of the speakers over that range. The right speaker, the one with the woofer buzz, is in the red. And if you look right here, we're at 125 hertz, and the value for the right speaker is 4.69% THD, and for the left speaker, it's less than half of that which is 2%. So I'm guessing that the speaker buzz for the right channel is right here at 128.5 hertz, which kind of makes sense because I notched out the 125 hertz band on the equalizer and the speaker buzz went away for the right speakers. So that kind of just makes sense from the data that is being seen. So as far as listening to the pair of speakers, once I was all done with the measurements, I set them apart about oh maybe five feet between them and I, I was sitting in the center which is over that direction in my uh, normal chair that I use and I hooked it up to my Macintosh uh, pre-amplifier and power amplifier and a few other things I have in that system and I use a Swim Mini streamer for the source and was listening to several of my test tracks but the first track as soon as it hit some bass that right uh, woofer just rattled and, and it was I, I just couldn't listen to music at that point. It was just uh, Too awful for me like scratching, you know a chalkboard with the fingernails kind of effect You know after 30 seconds I was done and I felt really bad that I put all this effort into measurements and I can't give uh, Really that good of a, a response as far as what it sounds like So I got to thinking a little bit and you know what the C48 has a five band equalizer and one of the bands is at 125 hertz, which seemed to be kind of in the middle of the uh, distortion area where this thing seemed to be sensitive to it. So I adjusted the 125 hertz equalizer so that it was the least amount of gain at the uh, 125 hertz setting. And the music was listenable then. Now, I did not get the uh, chair... Uh, filling bass that I like to get coming up through my, my chair in uh, certain passages, but it sounded really good despite the fact that it was attenuated highly at 125 hertz. So there's a few tracks I listened to for all the bass, those I skip, but a few of my normal tracks, and, and I listened to quite a few of them, sounded really, really good, even with the 125 hertz cut down. I mean, the highs were, uh, were really good, the mid range was good. Uh, the vocals sounded really nice. I, I thought the, the sound stage was uh, pretty nice. I probably didn't have them quite far enough apart, but overall, I thought they were a very nice sounding speaker, despite the fact that I wasn't getting that uh, chair thumping bass that I like to get. So it certainly could be a reference speaker if you had the woofer fixed on the right channel. So it, it sounded smooth and, and just sounded really nice. I, I was very impressed with the sound. Uh, despite the fact that I wasn't getting that uh, gut-wrenching bass that I like to get. But it was still um, some bass there, and for most of the music, 
that wasn't bass dominant, it, it sounded really nice. And, and um, you know, it's not a straining speaker whatsoever. It was just a good listen to. So, you know, if you have a chance to buy a pair and you make sure that their woofers uh, aren't uh, rubbing, that kind of thing, then, uh, you know, it might be a heck of a nice speaker for someone. And of course, they're, they're pretty big, but I think they have a nice look to them. They did not come with the uh, covers that went in the front. Uh, I think they're pretty beat up from what I was told. So obviously the measurements were not done with those on. So other than that, uh, I thought it did a pretty good job. And it is, uh, you know, something I don't do, you know, a lot of recommendations on things. You, you listen to speakers and you like them or you don't. But I, I do think these would be worth, uh, you know, a listen to if you're in the market or ever been in the market for some reason and have a chance to hear them. Uh, I thought they were nice sounding. So that's kind of my take on the JBL 250 Ti loudspeakers. If you liked the video, of course, thumbs up. If you have not subscribed to the channel, that would be a good thing to do to help it grow. And I welcome your comments as always. So once again, until next time, have a great day or night.